I have a 32 inch Insignia TV LED model and I know I have bad LEDs on it because with a flashlight I can actually see the picture. One of the problems with this TV is that there are no LED replacement strips available. What we're going to have to do is install these universal strips in this set. Unfortunately, they won't fit. They were not going to work. They're not plug and play. So we're going to have to modify them to make them work. So let's show you how to do that. We've just removed our screen and our diffuser sheets. So now we have the LED strips exposed. And my next step is going to be doing a LED tester check with our tester here. So we're going to inject voltage into these LED strips to identify the defective one or ones. So positive with positive, negative with negative, and it's clearly marked. And every single LED strip or LED on this strip is lighting up. And the LED tester is saying it's pulling about 16.7 volts. Let's check our next one here. And it looks like this one has one missing LED that's not lining up. And the LED tester is saying it's pulling 17.5, 17.6 volts. Our last strip, if I test it here, all of the LEDs are lighting up again and 16.6 volts is being drawn. Okay, so it looks like only one of our strip is actually defective and only one LED over here is defective. Now, one of the reasons I think it is defective is it looks like the strip is actually not flush to the chassis of the TV. So most likely the cause of this was overheating. The chassis is the heatsink for these LED strips. So if the LED is not flush against the chassis, there's nowhere for the heat to go and that probably is what burnt out the LED. So let's go ahead and remove all three strips. When we're doing LED strip repairs, you always want to replace every single LED on every strip uh, just because if one of them goes out, the other ones are probably not too far behind. The original LED strips have six LED diodes and the replacements that we have have eight. So there are two extra ones that we have to get rid of. So what we'll do is we're gonna actually cut the strip into uh, sets, segments of two and we're gonna spread out three of those, one in the center and two on the outsides and we're gonna discard two of the strip, two of the remaining LEDs to the side. So one other challenge we're gonna have is we have these little dimples and they match and they fit with this strip but they don't with our replacement which means that if we put the strip exactly where the original one was again we're not going to have that proper flush contact with the chassis so we're not going to have um, anywhere for the heat to go and that's going to cause premature failure so we're going to also have to kind of scooch our replacement strip a little bit lower just below, below those dimples uh, in order to make sure we have a smooth flush uh, contact with the chassis. All right, so we're going to keep cutting here. Strips of two. All right, and let's see. So these we're going to place approximately like this. This will be more or less centered. And then we'll have these here. All right, and I think actually our connectors might be a match. If they're not, we're gonna have to wire them in directly. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it fits. The connector's a little bit too big, so we're gonna have to wire that in. So I've done my best to line the strips that I have here as close as possible to where the original LEDs were. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier for me, I'm going to mark them with a line with Sharpie. So one of the advantages of these universal LED strips that I have here is we have double-sided thermal tape on the back. And instead of using these just screws to hold them down, we're gonna have that thermal tape help transfer the heat from the LEDs into the chassis of the TV. So in theory, that should help with the longevity of the repair for these strips once they're replaced. All right, so I'm gonna be wiring the LEDs directly because the connector doesn't fit. I'm just stripping the wire first. And actually, before I go further, I'm gonna start adding a little bit of solder to the points I'm soldering to here. Okay. 
put a real nice healthy blob of solder in there just to make it easier for myself. All right, I just went ahead and tinned all my little wires. They're all cut and preset to where I'm gonna need to wire up all these strips together. So one of the things we're gonna do is, and I've done it in a couple, but I still have a few more to do, is uh, we had to expose some of the copper so that we can solder our wires to. Now we already have some of the uh, test points, I guess, uh, that are exposed, so we're gonna use those where we can. But then there is our positive uh, down at the bottom that runs at the bottom of every single strip that we do need to expose to the copper. So I'm using this little um, electronics Dremel to do that. And that easily exposes the copper for us to be able to solder to. Right now I'm just tinning our exposed copper traces so that we we do actually solder our wires, it's gonna be a little easier for me. So both my wires, oops, both my wires and the LED strip are pre-tinned which makes it a little bit easier for me to solder them together. And I recommend doing that. Let's see, I'm fold that over. All right, so I just finished wiring every single one of these small sets of two LED strips together. Now I have a little bit of excess, so I'm gonna tape these down with electrical tape. Um, actually, we're probably gonna use Kapton tape. And like that, the, uh, the white reflector sheet that we're gonna put on top is gonna be able to lay flush on, on the uh, LED strips. All right, before we plug anything in to confirm functionality, we're gonna use our LED tester to confirm. And we're gonna do one strip at a time, so just like we did originally, positive with positive, negative with negative. And it looks like we're pulling about 16.4 volts, so a tiny little bit less, and all six of our LEDs are lighting up. So we'll just keep going here. Same thing, everything looks good. And again, everything looks good. So I think we're in business. Let's go ahead and put the diffuser sheet back on after we tape down the wires, and keep going from there. As you might suspect, none of the LEDs actually line up with the holes. So in order for us to make it work, we're gonna have to cut out with this X-Acto blade the LED holes so that the sheet can be flush against the back of the set and so that the light can shine through. So I'm gonna try and make these holes as small as possible. They don't have to be perfect. There is room for error. Let's see. Okay, that should be good enough. One more thing we're gonna do here is add this double-sided tape. The reason we're doing this is because I noticed my reflector sheet wasn't quite sitting perfectly. What it'll do is it'll help keep it in place, especially once we flip the TV over and move it around and whatnot just so it's in the correct spot, nice and flush against the LEDs to make sure that they shine bright and um, past the reflector. Before we proceed any further, now that we have the reflector sheet on, we're gonna plug it in to confirm all the LEDs turn on. And let's see here. Okay, looks like it is powering on. And our LEDs do turn on. All right, we're gonna put the diffusers back in. And finally the screen. I 
I haven't tested this yet, so we're gonna find out if it works together. Let's go ahead and plug it in. And let's see what we get with that screen. All right, standby lights flashing. That looks beautiful. Okay, one of the important things we're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on is because the LEDs that we placed in there are not in the same identical locations, we wanna make sure that we still have a good even distribution of lights, which is why we did cut them into separate uh, pieces. Aside from having standard definition quality, it looks pretty good. That's how we do an LED strip replacement on a TV with no LED strips available. If you found this video helpful or useful, give us a like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. Thanks for watching.